boys, gals, and non-binary pals, welcome to the closing chapter of the Michael Bay Movie Month. So pop open a sleeve of Oreos, fire up your The Pill, and let's male gaze the hell out of the April season finale. And today's prescription calls for a healthy dose of the affable medical mechanoid, Ratchet. The doctor is in. Now then, Ratchet's role in the movies really was the other Autobot, wasn't it? The guy who was also there. You know, Ironhide's mate. All he really did was show up and immediately start talking about shagging, explain to the audience why Bumblebee ain't talk proper, then his job was basically done for two and a half films until his horribly upsetting murder and posthumous mutilation in movie four. There was never really room for him, was there? Because he's the medic, and people don't watch these movies to see robots getting fixed. Like, my personal favourite Ratchet moment came from the Transformers 07 tie-in video game strategy guide, which of course I own this and have read it for the articles. But hear me out, Ratchet gets his own full page spread explaining why he's not in the game, and it's because he doesn't like hurting people. He's too nice! He's too nice for all of this! But in the medium of toy, I've always admired his effortless ability to turn a look. Yes indeed, time today for a rainbow of Ratchet's rad fits in a rapid repaint roundup. I've got five, they're all different, they're all wrong, we're just gonna buzz through all of them. This is Ratchet, 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 and Ratchet. Get in the back of the glambulance! <laughs> But whoa there, bucko! Before we indulge in alternative medicine, let's set the baseline with 2007 Legends Ratchet, who seems to have largely got the colours right. Mostly a sort of gross, hyper-visible vomi green, with some silver and black flourishes and a styling stylized ECG spike and stripe. That's it! That's broadly the Bob Ratchet look, and I can't wait to show you the ways they made it weird. Side note real quick, I know I rag on the 07 Pocket Bots a lot, but this one's actually great! It's got a really sweet and unusual transformation. The whole torso chunk pulls an incredible vertical pivot. The legs do a similar independent swoosh around. The spare tire on top spins like a real wheel. It's a gem. It's a silly little sleeper hit. Look at that. Perfect. All right, let's crack on. So as of this point, none of the rest of these versions of Ratchet and or Clank are truly movie accurate, but we'll begin as close to the screen as we possibly can with the first main movie mold repurposed for the second film as Desert Tracker Ratchet. Everyone confused? Good. Good. Bayverse lives! Now then, this Voyager class clodhopper is so symptomatic of the first movie pile's problematic production process. That is, the Hasbro crew had so obviously barely got to grips when making these designs work in the physical world. Check out this impossibly lump and snot behemoth, like an ogre made out of bogies. A boga. <laughs> Absolute boga load. Electric bogalo. And honestly, I've got so much love in my heart for this hideous thing, but there's no way it's good. It like half works. There's some good stuff in here, but it's instantly cancelled out by something else that sucks. I mean, I really enjoy that his whole chest is just the front of a van flip turned upside down, with his wheels bouncing noisily out of the collar. But then right below that, the midsection's just a mass of layers and folds. That is sedimental. Head's kind of good, but in a beefy tash and ocean blue light piping, but the cover's super ugly and it keeps popping off. And like these double folded shutter shoulders are pretty impressive, but all they're in service of is these grody shriveled goblin claws. There's not even that much kibble to speak of, because he carries all the mass in his shins. What's your favourite GameCube title? Billy Ratcher and the Giant Leg. And the weaponry's a joke! Like, I know he's the chill one, but he's embarrassingly underarmed. With this crap little flip out butterfly axe, and the even crapper flimsy grabber, it's friggin' flimsy low hand. So do you see what I mean? It sucks, but it's fun. Just a big glumphin green gremlin absolutely swamped in Shrek's appeal. <laughs> It's definitely a tale of two hemispheres. Those mid layers unravel uneasily, and I'm never convinced the arms are gonna fit until they do. But the vehicle mode kicks ass, man. But they definitely started with this, right? This is one serious siren head. Just a billowingly bulk mungus humbulance here to save the world and steal your girl. And it's wild to me that this is what Voyager class used to mean. But how about that paint job? That's not quite the original colour, is it? It is not. Well spotted me. So you'll notice big 
Benedict Cumberatch here is decked out in a slightly sickly semi-green with a washed out feel and a subtle and highly localised sandy splatter because he's apparently in desert tracker mode to tie in with Revenge of the Fallen's desert denouement. But in this attempt to bring the screen experience to life, it actually winds up less accurate. Because while they did indeed hit the dunes, Ratchet and indeed all sponsored hero vehicles were absolutely pristine at all times. Clearly there was a different kind of green in charge. I do kind of love how it just forgets about the cardio pulse tampo after a certain point. Just like how the movies forgot about him. Huh, G1 versions already, is it? That's right it is! Introducing Rescue Ratchet, decked out in gleamy white and red in homage to the evergreen Ratchet palette. And much like his Bapril bosom buddy GDO Ironhide, it looks friggin' wonderful! I just love how he pops in the peachy pearly tracksuit with the hyper ginger sideburns and reassuring Hippocratic medi badges. Alt mode's a sickening slambulance! Work in that hot red heartbeat ribbon, the little fake out light bar and the deep blue toilet duck windows. And what is that typeface? How's that gonna read in your rear view mirror? Oh, look out! Better move over for the Koala, Crescent Moon, Stonehenge, Lambda, Tetromino, Oxbow Lake, Ampersand, Nesting Table 6. Rescue Ratchet is just dope, man. I don't know if you'd even need any holdover old school affection to enjoy this. What do we think? Any post G1 fans out there want to chime in? You into this? I mean, I kind of like it as a callback to a normal 1980s ambulance before they went all green and stupid. Am I being a G1er about reality? <laughs> Right then, time for a hop over to Dark of the Moon with another confusingly time-displaced repaint from the previous thing. This is the 2011 release of the 2009 deluxe figure. Uh, with no trousers on. It's Scan Series Ratchet, baby! So the Scan Series was a limited run of existing movie toys reproduced in semi-see-through plastic with a charmingly cheesy electro-white beat intended to evoke the moment of alt-mode scanning. And honestly, I love this. It's high concept, it's ballsy, it's knowingly naff, and they're all but made of light piping. So we gotta lead with the colours here, cause he does. Look at this dork on, preening around semi-clad like your half-asleep roommate. Put some clothes on ghost legs. But nudity notwithstanding, this is a great figure. This is such a step up from the last guy. We're probably peeking here for me. The head weirdly hasn't got light piping, but it's great. The colours on the bit that has colour are just radioactive, like laser beam green. The shoulders are like genius 3D chess boards. Arms are actually really good with splatty double thumbed hands and rubbery wristbands. And he's traded out the leg bulk for somewhat graceless hip skirts and a backpack, which the backpacks only get worse from here on in, so this is manageable. And the transparent trousers are such stupid fun. Love the mech alive tech thighs and the triangle triple toes. It works, it's a wonderful toy. Seriously an all time fave for me, this one. And check out the weapon, which is canonically a non-lethal EMP cannon. I'm okay. It locks luxuriously into this mid-forearm mechamatic cog mouth, but it's also got a convenient second handle there, so Lockdown can steal it. Because remember when Ratchet vs Lockdown was a fun rough and tumble rivalry, rather than a graphic extrajudicial execution? Graphic extrajudicial, extrajudicial, it's not even fun to say. Transformation's a bit of a tangle. It's mostly all shoulders and wondering how long the clear bits are gonna last. And the alt mode falls a bit flat, honestly. It's kind of square in a bad way. I don't love the reduced roof rack and it's very undercarriagey, which definitely drags your eye line down, but you can kind of sort it out with the weapon. Helps a bit. It is still a decent little vehicle mode and the scan stick really pops here. It's so deliciously daft, the way it gradients off into clear plastic with the NAFO ECG lightning zap looking like bus upholstery. Do you get what I mean? It's a valiant effort. It's so silly. And they really went for it. I bet at least 45% of you think it sucks. And that's where I live, baby. You just gotta respect it. Respect it. Now, we should probably talk about how Dark of the Moon gave old Ratch of the Day a smashing new Chartreuse colour scheme, but I'm not interested in that. Here's a red one! Oh yes, honey! Say Switch Swoo to Specialist Ratchet! Refined and redesigned with another all-new deluxe toy for the 2010s, this thing really was and remains a hell 
hell of an update for Big Maggie Ratcher. Ratcheting up the ratchetude with its cleanest lines and least nonsensical limbs to date. What an accolade. I mean, the legs are maybe a little jank for posing. The knees don't quite play ball at all times, but it doesn't kill it. Oh wow, look at these little shin ports. Literally just noticed those. Amazing. Love these shiny arm shields and the bonkers bonds there with its huge crimson conk and feral Santa vibes. He's also contractually obligated to bust out one of these auto flappy mech tech pistols. And I mean, I've seen less tidy backpacks, but you could tighten the straps. But this is a quality robot, man. Like old Peter Ratchel definitely makes more sense as a deluxe, right? I can see why they started off with a Voyager. That's a roomy ass ambulance. But as a bot, he's probably a pretty average Cybertronian lad. One size up from Bumblebee, really. Anyway, watch this. <laughs> Transformation on this thing is genius! Boasting a fierce front quarters panel fold and an absolutely unheard of extra chestular shoulder assembly spin. Stunning! And big special bruise road mode is a banging little rescue cube. A rescue. Just an absolutely adorable little wambulance. A wham bam thank you mambulance. Covered in roll cages and hummery harshness. Oh my sweet hummer child. It even gets away with the underhangy hands or underhandy hangs with his head just full out there, like an otter on its back. It looks so righteous in the rebalanced red with white highlights and that slick silvery stripe. Well, it's literally Rescue Ratbag's little bro, ain't it? Scaled down and concentrated into a single handful of irrepressible vitality and vibrance. The robot mode dances with dastardly devilry, and I'm not sure if it might even be a deep reach vintage mold mate reference. Cause imagine if Ratchet shared a body type with Ironhide. What would that be like? <laughs> And for the final course, how about a slice of black pudding? With Studio Series 96BB Nest Autobot Ratchet, released just this year under the perplexingly ill-defined subcapsule Buzzworthy Bumblebee, which <laughs> congrats on thinking up a shitter name than movie the best. You know what I think this box needs? Bit more branding? But aren't you so sick of these backdrops? Does anyone actually like these? How much concrete and fire can you stomach? But I gotta say, this gloomy scorched earth cityscape actually pops pretty hard against the fresh buzzworthy colors. But look at that lively yellow frame with the honeycomb hexagons and little purpley bluey flourish. They didn't have to go that hard. Still, Straight in the bin. Now the toy itself is shockingly almost exactly the same as the one we just looked at from 2011. Like it is a little bit reworked, but don't be fooled. It's just him again in a different sweater. But why not though? They definitely put the hours in back in the day. With established Ratchet works great as a deluxe and the mech tech toy rules. There's really not much to improve upon. It just feels a little cheeky after a full decade. I mean, it is a touch tighter in a few subtle ways. The legs are improved, shoulders are neater, details are gnarlier. The friggin' chronicles of Narlia. But the backpacks, I don't know about worse, but certainly similarly shite in a slightly different way. That rack looks mighty slack, and the gun straight up sucks. Did they finish this? Cause it doesn't feel like they finished this. Alt mode is again about the same. Hello. Oh, hello. With pretty much the same proportions, the same hummery hallmarks, the same jingle jangle spingle spangle finger dangle, but they have at least upgraded some of the detailing and added some super serious action boy tampos. Along with some additional and very out of character side mounted weapon ports. And I think that's the vibe is out of character. Cause for me, Ratchet really doesn't suit this Kevlar coated gray station groove. Why have they done this version? What's the gag here? Is it trying to be badass? Like some government alliance undercover uniform thing? Can you see Ratchet going in for that? Or is it like sleep mode? Is it to remind us all that he died? Cause it's him and Bone Crusher, ain't it? And Bone Crusher's been dead since the first film. I don't know, man. I thought it was cool at first. We love a goth serve, but now, I think I hate it. Because after reliving Ratchet's frivolous fashion forays, this comes off kind of creepy and depersonalizing. It feels like he's been mugged of his identity. It strips away all his visual flavor so he can finally conform to the movie's desaturated, contrast-free zone. At last, we can stop having fun. This is Ratchet if he bought into the war games. Desensitized and indoctrinated, a cold-eyed killer like the rest of them. Where's my goofy boy gone? This ain't Ratchet. Surely this is some 
macho tryhard fan character with a name like Hollow Point or something. It feels like a toy for that one customizer guy who painted his spinister grey. But you know, maybe I'll come around on it. Maybe it ain't that deep. Because if one thing's for sure, it's that this ratchet bitch can tackle any look he fancies and simply slay all day. Any size, any colour, any vibe, any time, any place, and for any reason, Ratchet always understands the assignment. And I'll always be here hooting and hollering for more. Tens across the board. And with that, we can just about call it a wrap on Baveril. I do hope you've dug this little retro dalliance into the depths of delightful dumbness. Maybe we'll bring it back for 2024. But for now, huge thanks to Truck vs. Gun, Tim Call, Rider Ion, and indeed, your bad self. Mind how you go? Fingers crossed for Rise of the Beasts. Oh, don't be shit. Please don't be shit. And until next time, if you're ratchet and you know it, clap that ass. <laughs> Hey, love a ratchet repaint me. Look at that, we did it. Bayfril is a Waypril. Hooray, Prill. <laughs> Cheers for watching. Thank you to every patron who ever supported me in the world. And guess who came out of the random hat this time? Only bloody Dr. Lockdown, the anti-ratchet. Thank you, mate. Appreciate your support. Right, I'm off to Scotland. Toodles. Be sure to subscribe for more Theo's awesome Transformers reviews. Limited appeal, keeping it real.